The Democrats want to convince us they need to federalize elections to give, the, to give voting voice to minorities. But it's a voice that's already been guaranteed by the 1965 Voting Rights Act that was passed by Republicans. But now, anyone who votes against the Democrats means that they must be a racist. We are living through the worst assault on the right to vote since the Jim Crow era. And yesterday, on the Senate floor, white nationalists used the Jim Crow filibuster to block voting rights legislation. You know, these overused terms, Jim Crow filibuster. So that vote he mentioned was 52 to 48. I'm sorry, are you saying that all of them are white supremacists? Joining me now is California Congress, congressional candidate and Navy veteran, Joe Collins. You know, Joe, I'm so happy to see you. Um, my fellow Navy vet, Navy Marine team here. Uh, there are 35 states that have voting laws on the books right now to require voter ID that have been upheld by the courts. But what the Democrats want to do is outlaw any voter ID requirement. That would include those 35 states, along with have mail-in ballots, allow, allow it to be where you can have same-day registration. Why are they doing this, and how is this discriminating against minorities by them trying to change? How are they, they have no valid case. How can they prove that we are discriminating against minorities and their right to vote? Hey, Jesse. Well, you know, it's great to be on with you this evening, and I would like to bring things to a full circle. Joe Biden's uh, disaster at the border is what's causing them to want to create these laws to where you're going to remove the ID in order to vote. And he, the reason why is because they want to be able to allow every single illegal immigrant who sneaks into our country to vote. We know the Democrats are really great at giving handouts. And so they're going to give handouts to illegal immigrants in return for those illegals voting uh, for the Democrats if they can get this legislation pushed through. Now, I think that, you know, the Democrats have been very strategic in getting every single uh, thing that goes on in the United States uh, in front of the black community and getting them emotionally tied into uh, these issues. And they say, well, this uh, voting laws discriminates against blacks. It discriminates against Latinos. When in reality, we know that if you're if you if you're a Democrat and you say anything is racist, black people are going to get behind you and say, yeah, this is racist. And they don't even know how. I mean, you got to have an ID to get a vaccine. You got to have an ID to buy cigarettes. You got to have an ID to buy alcohol. You got to have an ID to practically do every single thing in the United States. So how come you don't need an ID to vote in elections that considerably uh, creates the outcome of the United States for every single person who lives here. You know, that is such a perfect point. I was going to touch on that. So we have a law in place that says you cannot discriminate based upon race, the 1965 law. However, they're coming back now and saying that you have to have an ID and your vaccine passport to go into restaurants in New York City, in Washington, D.C., how is this not discriminatory? So now they're trying to say, oh, but people can get ID as long as it's convenient for them. What do you make of this? How is it they can justify one for the vaccine, but not the other for voting? And you know they're disenfranchising minorities and many low-income people. If this is their argument, then they're disenfranchising the very people they say that they're promoting from going out even to have dinner. Where's, where's this yeah. line up? <laughs> I, you know, I absolutely agree. But, you know, I'm always skeptical when a light, white liberal tried to tell me how to live or try to tell any black person how to live in America and what's discriminating uh, them in America, knowing that there has never been a white liberal to do anything for a person of color uh, in this country, including uh, Joe Biden, who is the most popular, unpopular president in the history of the United States. But I think that black America, I think that Latinos are sick of being used as a ploy to get all of these bills passed that will never benefit the, the black community or the Latino community. When Joe Biden ran, he said, I'm going to be the president that unites this country. And now he's the president who divides this country. He's a president for the vaccinated. He's a president for everybody who he can control. And so now when you see these laws being pushed, they make it seem like it's discriminatory against black America, but it's not. They want to give illegals the right to vote. They want to be able to steal elections. They want to make it easier for them to come in and do like they did in this 2020 election and, and steal votes. 
Yeah, you're hitting the nail right on the head because you know what this is? is It's a distraction. Biden is losing support across all demographics, not just minorities. And so the only message they've got now is to pound forward with racism. My, my thought is from you, what do you think they should really be focusing on if they want to show that they're benefiting minority groups and others? Because right now the nation is really divided, as you just said. Well, I'll give you my honest opinion. I think that if the Biden administration wants to focus on something, they need to focus on the mental health of Joe Biden. I can tell you right now, I'm not a health expert, but from what I can see, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for him. And the way he's making decisions, is not looking good for the United States. Inflation is skyrocketing. The cost of living is going up. Gas prices are high. The average American is struggling every single day. And those checks that they were sending out, it didn't help, especially when you talk about a place like California. Crime is high. The cost of living is high. Homelessness is high, and nobody's doing anything about it. You know, Joe, you made me laugh at that last comment, but it's also very sad. You're right. So, Joe Collins, thank you so much, my Navy brother, for joining us.